your justification, what it ought to do, is spur you along to want to grow in godliness, to see the things of this world grow faintly dim, and to see Christ and him growing you into his image, the thing that you pursue. Pastor Jesse, the first question I have for you uh, is kind of a basic question about Christian living. How can I become more holy? Right out of the gate, I, I love the question. I, I, I love it because it speaks to a right desire if a person is a follower of Jesus Christ. Now, I should note that if a person is not a follower of Jesus Christ, I have a much different answer than I would answer if the person's a Christian. If you're not a Christian, you can't become more holy than you are today. And then you have to understand that in the eyes of an infinitely holy God, uh, you are vile, you're wicked, you're depraved. That's how he describes you in his word. Um, and that initial feeling that you might have of wanting to become more holy uh, is the wrong one, actually, because you can't read your Bible enough, and you can't pray enough, and you can't uh, go to events like these enough, or eat enough Chick-fil-A chicken, for instance. <laughs> um, none of that's going to ever merit you anything uh, in the eyes of a holy God or earn you favor with the holy God. Rather, if you have not truly given your life to Christ, to Jesus Christ, uh, the only thing that you can do is repent of your sins and trust in his finished work on the cross as the only way by which you might have forgiveness for those sins and have eternal life secured for you. So I want to make sure we get that right right out of the gate. If you're not a believer, if you're not a follower of Christ, don't think in terms of how do I become more holy, think of how do I get saved? And that's through the means of the cross of Christ. Um, If you are a Christian, number one, praise God, and the answer is a lot different. Um, If you're a follower of Christ, you're already holy meaning you're positionally holy. You're justified is the, is the biblical term. You've been made righteous in, in the eyes of that same holy and righteous God that I just mentioned. And your justification, what it ought to do, is spur you along to want to grow in godliness, to, to grow in holiness. The, the hymn, um, I forget the title there, and you'll have to help me, but the things of this world growing faintly dim, that, that should be your passion as a believer, to, to see the things of this world grow faintly dim and to see Christ and him growing you into his image, the thing that you pursue. That's the natural uh, position for the believer. It's normal to want to strive in holiness, to grow in godliness. So how? How, how does a believer, to answer the, answer the question the way you phrased it, become more holy? Well, praise God, he's made it very clear and he's made his disciplines, the disciplines he provides to believers very clear, and they've been timeless throughout the centuries. Um, One very simple one is to be in God's word. The way you understand how to honor God, to know what he wants for you and what he wills for you, is to see what he said to you in the word. Um, I think of Psalm 119.9, which says, how can a young man keep his way pure? By keeping it according to your word. So there's that link between purity, holiness, and God's word. Second, you need to commit to praying to God for that very thing, to grow in holiness, to grow in godliness. We know from Scripture that your growth in Christ is God's will for you. 1 Thessalonians 4.3 says, this is the will of God for you, your sanctification. So if you don't have that, if you don't have growth, if you're not growing in godliness, why might that be? Maybe it's what Jesus said, that you have not because you ask not for that very thing. Um, Third, a way to grow in godliness is to be mentored by, uh, counseled by, discipled by, trained up by, godly individuals who are a little further down the track in their faith than you are. So as young adults, especially your closest peers in these formative years, your closest influences, your closest mentors ought to be those who are striving in their own right to follow the Lord faithfully. That's who you should be looking up to and and, and getting time with and getting on their calendar and getting into their group chat or whatever the case may be. (laughs) I'm just trying to be young and hip and relevant. Group me. Yeah. Group me. Sorry. (laughs) So, Go outside your normal bubble of friends and influences if you need to, to make sure that it's those godly individuals that are pouring into you and mentoring you and discipling you. The fourth thing I would add is to pursue good reading on this topic of holiness and of godliness specifically. I wrote down a couple of titles, The Pursuit of Godliness by Jerry Bridges, Holiness by J.C. Ryle, going back about a century or two, Uh, Humility, a book by a man named Andrew Murray is fantastic. And then The Doctrine of Repentance by Thomas Watson, written in the 1650s, if you want to go way back, is an awesome book to read about what it means to grow in godliness. So 
those would be some of them. Get in the word, be in prayer, be in fellowship and discipled, counseled by godly influences, and then read good books on, on that pursuit. What a full answer. I always appreciate how you list things sequentially and it makes it easier to understand. It's I'm a lawyer on me. Yeah, it's helpful. I'm a linear thinker, so <laughs> I appreciate that. Um, and thank you for making the distinction between you have to be saved first. Yeah. An unbeliever cannot please the Lord. Isaiah says, all your righteous deeds, Israel, are like filthy rags in my sight because yep. they're trying to please the Lord by good works without Christ's forgiveness, with sin still on their record. Right. 